Can you put up your best fight without a doctor on the battlefield? All of you, stay focused. I'm right behind you. Nat, how did you... Guess you guys had a bad talk, huh? Luckily, Sampo's got your back. Sampo! <laughs> I knew you'd be involved somehow. Base breached. Armed wildfire personnel detected. Assessing. All subjects are high-risk individuals. Commencing complete annihilation. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision. happiness even if the world outside the cage isn't beautiful people still want to know what it's like assessment system reset successful processing variables variable one Clara's request variable two outsiders intentions updated assessment result Transference of decision-making authority to outsiders. Outsiders are granted access to Stellaron intelligence. So... so we did it? Yeah, without her, even if we defeated Svarog, there's no way he'd have given us access to the intel, right? I hope his memory bank really does contain data on the Stellaron. Is this it, Nat? Us? Wildfire? The Underworld? Did... Did we win? No, Zila. Our battle. Their battle. It's just beginning. Finally, we finally made it to this point. Uh, what's up? Nervous? No, but I do have an aching feeling in my chest. I'm ready. Reveal the truth. I'm listening. I've finished collating the Stellaron data and records. Do you wish to proceed, outsiders? Requesting database materials cache, serial number 13175, encryption level highest. Request approved. Transmission. This is the fruit of many years of research, Madam Guardian. The evidence is irrefutable. This so-called Stellaron is the source of all the destruction. 
The people will struggle to accept this conclusion, Doctor. If we were to tell them that the almighty Elisa Rand activated this thing and triggered the eternal freeze... It's the truth, madam. The truth won't change with the opinions of the people. The reports before you are the precious result of painstaking effort on the part of Bellabog's greatest scholars. You must trust the weight of its conclusion. I have never doubted you, Doctor. On the contrary, I am resolute in the face of this conclusion. From the moment I took up this mantle, that voice, their voice, has made its home in my mind. I cannot shake them. I shouldn't be telling you this. Let's return to your research, Doctor. I'm afraid I cannot make these reports known to the public. Unless... Unless? Unless what? Please, proceed, madam. Unless you have found a way to completely destroy the Stellaron. I understand. In the name of preservation, I will fulfill this mission. Cache number 13175. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 24830. I don't understand, Doctor. Why do we have to hide such valuable research results away? They're the work of a lifetime. You're, you're still young, child. There will come a day... A day when you do understand. This supreme guardian, she... She sees further than you or I. All the decisions are not for the security of Bellabog. I just think it's a shame. Our research has hit an obstacle. Meanwhile, your results will be buried in the snow. <coughs> don't, don't be upset, child. You, you still have lots of time ahead of you. When you find a way to destroy, <coughs> destroy the Stellaron, our efforts will have been worth it. Cache number 24830. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 57614. This is... Why is there a robot here? During his life, this was Dr. Mearsheimer's personal robot bodyguard. I heard it's a prototype from the Great War. Since the doctor and his assistants passed away, it's remained here. It hasn't moved an inch. Oh, I see. Let's start. We must unearth the doctor's research conclusions. All of them. Madam Guardian, I've found them. All the documents are here. Hmm. Good. That'll do. Madam Guardian, what should we do with the robot? Uh, it would seem a great waste to destroy it. Find someone to reset its system, and then arrange for it to be sent to the Underworld. I hear that the development group is in need of a robot with defense capabilities. Yes, madam. I'm sorry, doctor. But these results must be taken care of by the architects. One day, somebody will be able to carry out your behest. Cache number 57614. Transmission complete. Concluding data transmission. So, the truth is clear now, right? <sighs> And it would appear that they never succeeded. Now only one question remains. Why would Kokolia exhibit such a sudden change in her attitude towards us? Branya, are you okay? I'm, I'm fine. I just... I feel a little faint. Why? Why, Mother? 
Maybe, maybe she wasn't aware. Maybe she... I'm sorry. It's no use lying to yourself, Branya. It's time for you to make a decision. <sighs> hey, can I have a word with you? I know that we'll need time to process this new information, but we have to decide on our next plan as soon as possible. <sighs> the Furnace Core. The path to the surface is close at hand now. <laughs> Thank you. What you've done has brought new hope to the Underworld. Now, we have to wait and see. But maybe this will lead to a new lease on life. Well, you should really be thanking Sampo. If it weren't for his intel, we wouldn't have made it in time. As Wildfire's leader, I couldn't simply look on while you fought on our behalf. We had to come help. Huh? Huh? So you're the real chief? W what about Oleg? Oleg has always acted on my behalf. He helps me deal with all manner of problems in the Underworld. Thanks to him, I'm able to make time for the people. I do my best to make sure that they have everything they need. At the same time, I was formulating a plan to deal with Svarog. Your arrival unraveled that carefully crafted yet rudimentary plan. <laughs> and for that, you have my utmost thanks. A person is defined by their actions alone. I think that's how the saying goes. <laughs> if the Underworld recovers its freedom, the people will see you as heroes. However, even though Svarog is no longer sealing off the Furnace Core, there's no way that we Undergrounders could go pouring onto the surface. That cold-blooded Supreme Guardian has used lies and tricks to keep the surface separated from the Underground. If she detects any change in the Underworld, I don't know what she might resort to. As for Wildfire, we need more time to build up our strength. Of course, there's no doubt about that. So I'll be sending someone I trust to go with you. Zila. Didn't she tell you? In private, she insisted on accompanying you. Don't let her carefree nature fool you. She's actually very discerning and can read a situation like no one else. Zila is a talented scout and a quick thinker. She takes decisive action. She'll definitely be able to help you. Not to mention, you also have Branya now. You're right. But with Zila by her side, I know she'll recover. Hey, when's the last time you got some rest? I heard that you've been on your feet looking for Sparog since Rivet Town. Health is everything. You won't be much use if you neglect yours. Let Wildfire take care of the Furnace Core for now. You head back and recuperate. If you're lucky, perhaps tomorrow you can return to the Overworld. Take a good rest while you still can. Your adventures on the surface won't be easy going. Don't be surprised. My job is just to help everyone make the right calls. You remember Rivet Town? When the Fragmentum Corrosion first appeared, we were defenseless. We didn't have a clue how to protect our homes. After we fled to Boulder Town, I made up my mind. A tragedy like that could never be allowed to happen again. That's why I gathered Oleg and the others together, and created the first sparks of Wildfire. Afterwards, Wildfire began to grow. To be honest, I never thought a day like this would come. <laughs> what do you mean? That's me too, you know. The me that my patients see, at least. Our identities are like masks. When we switch between them, we change the way the world perceives us. But our hearts never change. Well, we don't want to act before the situation has stabilized. We need to wait for the right time. 
Ten years of being sealed away has sapped the Underworld's vitality. Now that the Furnace Core is no longer blocked off, we need to prioritize the people and replenish our resources. Wildfire has never been in this for its own gain. Everything we do is for the citizens of the Underworld. That passage is a means to an end, not the end itself. We'll leave them be. Svarog may have blocked off the Furnace Core, but he's provided shelter to the Vagrants from the beginning. An admirable deed. There are many homeless people in the Underworld. If they had safety and security, they wouldn't have to struggle to survive. Wildfire can provide that while Svarog is recovering. Things have settled for now. You should rest while you can. How's it going, partner? Is that feeling in your chest the thrill of victory, or just the joy of making it out alive? I know your heart is bursting with gratitude, but there's no need to thank me. We have what I'd like to call a fiscal friendship. If the money's right, not a problem in sight. Ha! I knew that you'd get yourselves into trouble eventually, so I got Oleg to send relief in advance. Pretty sensible, right? My assignment was simply to take you to Svarog's lair. I got the payment and delivered the goods. I wasn't obligated to tell you about my dinner plans. But I threw in something extra regardless. I only did that because we're friends, or I would have charged extra. Here's a slice of life experience for you. Resourceful businessmen never get into risky trading without a plan B and a plan B for their plan B. Plan C, we call that. The Chief? Of course I knew! Wildfire are mostly made up of torch and pitchfork types. How could they function without her? Not that I'm criticizing old Oleg. He's good at the heavy lifting. It's just that Wildfire needs a meticulous thinker lurking in the sh... Uh, <clears throat> working in the background. <laughs> Hey, now, you got me all wrong. I just enjoy watching people fight. That's all. Fierce words, fists flying. What's not to like? Easy there. Don't get mushy on me now. We professional types don't have time for thank yous. It's business. Feelings don't come into it. Ha ha ha. You see? Gotcha. <laughs> Seriously, though. Sampo will always be happy to assist you. At daybreak, the Guardian shall be a glittering star, illuminating the people's path. At nightfall, the Guardian shall be a flickering flame, comforting the people's soul. Ah, oh, so many years. Have I been following lies this whole time? Hey. Maybe you should find someone to talk to. <laughs> Don't let it get you down. You can share your feelings with others, you know? Do you think keeping it all to yourself is doing you any good? You let that status of yours go to your head, huh? <laughs> Afraid to show weakness? That's why you're keeping so much bottled up inside, right? This isn't the overworld. I don't do envy and etiquette down here. Whatever's on your mind, you can say it. I just want to be clear in myself first. These fragments of history, the teachings I studied... It's all muddled together in my mind. I just... I don't know what I should believe. No, you just have to be clear on what you should do. You've spent long enough living in lies, Branya. This is your chance to break out of the cage. <sighs> Mr. Svarog, are you okay? Let me repair your language module first. Assessing. Language module operating as normal. Thank you, Clara. Did your memory module get damaged? 
Maybe I can fix that too. Retrieving memory module. Architect machine error records, intact. War of Defense combat data, intact. Geomero development group error records, intact. Record of Clara's crafting of miniature magnetic drill rigs, intact. Record of Clara's explanation of human sleeping in behavior, intact. So your memory module is okay? I have made a backup of all records pertaining to you, Clara. Do not worry. Even the one about sleeping in? There are multiple backups. I can recover them at any time. Mr. Svarog, can I delete some of them? I cannot grant this request. Records pertaining to you constitute important data, Clara. They must remain intact. They are... Memories of family. I understand. Mr. Svarog, I still want to help you check a few other modules. Turn around a little. Ah, <sighs> well, now that we're done with that whole situation in the underworld, we can finally look for the Stellaron. Ah, <sighs> but thinking about it, I feel a bit bad about Clara. We promised her that our talks with Sfarog would go peacefully. You tried your best. Don't blame yourself. I should have considered such a situation in advance. And it was Svarog who attacked first. We didn't have any other choice. Uh, I didn't mean for you guys to start beating yourselves up over it. Look on the bright side. Things turned out alright, didn't they? Now everyone knows that the real problem here is the Stellaron, and they're willing to help us out. All in all, the mission is going super smoothly. But we still have a lot left to figure out. For instance... Exactly. We don't even have the Stellaron's coordinates and location. Kokolia's sudden change in attitude is also very curious. We still haven't put all of the pieces together. Dreams? I remember you mentioned something about strange dreams before. Hmm. All three dreams were the same, with Kokolia and that other voice. It would be weird to call it a coincidence. I'm wondering if these dreams aren't just random. If there is some meaning behind them. Huh. Maybe you're having them because... Because of the Stellaron inside him? That's my hunch. But I have no proof. <sighs> well, then that's as good as nothing for now. So, what should we do when we get back above ground? After all this talk, we're still back at square one. We solve a puzzle one piece at a time. Let's get some rest. We'll talk to Wildfire tomorrow and get to the bottom of this. Also, there's still one more key character we haven't talked to yet. Her connection to Kokolia may be the key to cracking this mystery. You're back! I've heard from Wildfire that you helped resolve that whole situation with Zvarog. Amazing! It must have been exhausting. Please, have some food and get a good night's rest. Over there. See that? That used to be the worst street in Rivet Town. And it's also where I grew up. My friends and I used to wander those streets, thinking about where to find our next meal. That is, until Chief Oleg got me out and took me to the orphanage. There, I learned to read and write from Natasha. At the age of ten, I started to patrol the mines with Oleg, occasionally getting into fights with the local thugs. <sighs> a 
That sounds nice. Nice? Are you being sarcastic with me? Oh, no, sorry. Life in the underworld is difficult. I shouldn't be speaking about it so lightly. Ugh, you're always so serious. It really gets on people's nerves sometimes, you know? Uh, right. Uh, what I meant was... Uh, I kind of envy you, Zila. For as long as I can remember, my days have been an endless cycle of studying, etiquette lessons, and training. Every day, all I hear is, Remember who you are, Bronya. This is against the Architect's admonishments, Bronya. Ladies shouldn't use such foul language, Bronya. <laughs> Some may envy this kind of life, but I have felt trapped. When every choice and every goal has already been made for you. <laughs> you probably can't imagine how that feels. No, I can't. But more importantly, what kind of foul language are you using? <sighs> In the name of the Architects, I shall stick this spear into your nostril. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Looks like I'll have to teach you some underworld slang before you go back. <laughs> no. No, that won't be necessary. <laughs> It'll be better than poking people's nostrils, at least. <sighs> I never thought that I'd be here having a heart-to-heart -heart with the future Guardian. As a kid, I didn't meet many people who lived in the overworld. I only heard stories from the grown-ups and figured you were all just a bunch of cold snobs. I've heard from some Silvermane veterans that before the orders were made to seal off the underworld from the overworld, there was no difference between the two places. Everybody ate the same food, chatted about the same topic, celebrated the same festivals. Even though times are different now, Things like the joys and sorrows of life, the ties between people. These precious things must certainly still connect us all. If there is a way to bridge the gap between the two worlds, we can definitely go back to the time when you and I were not divided. When we could stand side by side against the eternal freeze and the fragmentum. <laughs> I'm not like you. I don't have that many grand plans for the future, but if that's the future you want, I'm willing to build this bridge with you. Thank you, Zila. Your trust is very important to me. Speaking of which, um, what are you going to do next? What Svarog revealed must have made quite an impact, huh? Yes. I thought I was prepared for anything, but... As long as I am the Guardian's successor, those truths will come out sooner or later. But why does my mother hide it from me, and why does she want me to hunt down the outsiders who know about the nature of the Stellaron? It just... it doesn't make sense. I thought it over. There's only one thing I can do. Go ask her directly. You... Hold on. You're not really going, are you? A alone? You can't. This plan is... I've already thought it through, Zila. I am Madame Kokolia's daughter. That will never change. Be it my duties as her heir or as a Silvermane guard, I must face my problems head on. Even if... <sighs> Branya. This is for you, Zila. Please, help me pass it on to the Outsiders. If... If I am unable to see you again, they'll know what to do. Okay, I understand. You've made up your mind, and there's nothing I can say that will change it. But, remember this. If you run into trouble, I will come to save you, no matter what. Then I'll be waiting for you. So, 
Did you come to this spot when you were a child? Of course. I just didn't appreciate how nice it was at the time. <sighs> Very nice. Uh, that was a good sleep. <laughs> I should go meet up with Martin. And... Took you long enough, sleepyhead. We've been waiting all day. I've noticed that our sleep routines don't match up. You either keep getting up in the middle of the night or snoozing away until the day's almost out. Unacceptable. You gotta work on your teamwork. Hmm. Did you have a dream again last night? Huh. That's weird. I bet the conductor won, right? Well then. Let's go find Wildfire to discuss her next move. And see if they have any new discoveries. Let's go! I can't wait to finally get back above ground! Oh, look who's here. It's the Bane of Sfarag, the big hero of the Underworld. And the other big heroes, Dan Hung and March 7. Were those lines rehearsed? Where's Natasha? Is she here? She has a bunch of other things to attend to. So I hope you don't mind talking to this <clears throat> old man instead. I speak on behalf of Natasha. By the way, sorry for keeping that whole thing about her being the actual leader of Wildfire a secret. <laughs> hmm. I'm glad you don't mind. Natasha is always cautious, but she has no ill intent, as you surely have noticed. She told me to make sure you return to the overworld safely. I gave it some thought, and I think the safest way is to ask this fellow for help. I brought you down. I can take you back up. Free of charge. Satisfaction guaranteed. There's no need to knock us out this time, right? Of course not. This time, we'll go back through the Furnace Core. Well, for my sparkling companionship, of course. <laughs> I jest, I jest. The path has been blocked for over ten years, and very few know how to get through. That's where I come in. Ugh, enough chatter. Just be a good guide. Hold on. What about Branya? Why isn't she here? She already went back. As you know, she has some things to settle with the Supreme Guardian. What? She just ditched us and went back? How could you let her? Exactly. She has a lot of responsibilities. I don't completely understand, but I trust that she's trying to solve the problem. Oh, right. Branya told me to give you this. She left us a letter. Hmm. Could this be one of those open in case of emergency letters? I've never gotten one of those before. Should we wait until we run into something dangerous? Stop overthinking and just open it. Sister Landau? I know the brother must refer to Japard, but who could the sister be? Oh, Sir Ball! So she's Japard's older sister. She gave it some good thought. But whatever's going on in that Supreme Guardian's head... <sighs> Even Branya might have trouble understanding. Sampo! 
Do you know the Landau siblings? Landau? Uh, yeah, we're all friends. I've mostly dealt with the younger brother in the past, but the sister? <laughs> She's much scarier. Uh, today's supposed to be a day of celebration, so let's not talk about it right now. We can set out at any time. Just come find me when you're ready.